Okay, this problem is a little bit tricky. Um, we are given the area of a sector, all right, the area of this slice of the circle, and we are given the length of the intercepted arc, and we're being asked to find the radius. So, um, let's see, how should we do this? So here is the intercepted arc, and that is 12 meters. Meanwhile, the area of this sector, okay, the area is 100 square meters. And we are being asked to find the radius. So, when I'm dealing with sectors and arc length, um, what you will often hear me say is part over whole equals part over whole. And I've never actually worked out a problem like this before, but I'm going to wing it and see if I can get through this and get to an answer. So um, for the first part over whole, I'm going to let that be area. And for the second part over whole, I'm going to let that be length. Okay, so let's see what we've got and let's see how far we can get. Okay, so part over whole area. The partial area is the area of the sector. So that we know, and I'm just going to put 100 for 100 meters squared. The whole area of the circle, we don't know. Uh, but we know the formula for the area is pi r squared. So I'm going to go ahead and just put down pi r squared. Notice there's the r, that's the variable that we are looking for. Now I'm going to do a similar thing for the length, part over whole length. The partial length is the length of this arc, so that would be 12. The whole length, all right, the length around the circle, if, I, if it was made of string, is called the circumference, and the circumference is 2 pi r. So I have part over whole area, and that should equal part over whole length. Notice that the only variable in this equation is r, and that's what we're supposed to find. So this should be doable. Um, I'm going to cross multiply. So if I do 12, here I'll color it. If I do this diagonal, then that's going to give me 12 pi r squared. And then if I do this diagonal, all right, 100 times 2, of course, is 200 pi r. So we need to solve this equation for r. I'm noticing that I've got r squared and I have r. So it's not like I can just get r by itself. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will get 0 on one side, and then I will try to factor, or worst case scenario, I will use the quadratic formula. I see the r squared. That makes this a quadratic equation. But for now, I'm going to get 0 on one side. So if I subtract 200 pi r from both sides, uh, maybe I'll show that. So if I do minus 200 pi r, minus 200 pi r. So on the left hand side, these aren't like terms, I'll just write them next to each other. So that gives me 12 pi r squared, all right, just copy that down, minus 200 pi r, and that should equal zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, try to pull out the greatest common factor. So I know that both of these are at least divisible by 4. And uh, they both have pi in common, and they both have r in common. So I'm going to try pulling out 4 pi r as a common factor. And let's look at what that would leave behind. Um, and then I'll know if I need to pull out a bigger number than 4. 
Now remember, when you're taking out a GCF, you can think of it as dividing. Like if I divided by 4 pi r, that will tell me what's going to be on the inside. So let's see. Um, so 12 divided by 4, that would be 3. All right, the pi's would cancel. r squared divided by r would be r. So on the inside, I've got 3r minus. Um, now, 200 divided by 4 is 50. And then the pi's would cancel and the r's would cancel. So, and, uh, so I've pulled out the common factor, and this is what I have so far. So this is now factored. So if I want to solve for r, what I can do is I can uh, use the zero product property, which means that if I have something times something equals zero, then one of two things is going to happen. I can get a solution by setting the first factor equal to zero, and I can get another solution by setting the second factor equal to zero. Okay, so if I go to solve this one, um, to get r by itself, I would have to divide both sides by 4 pi. All right, that will leave me r equals 0. Now, in the context of this problem, does it make sense that r could equal 0? No, that doesn't make any sense because you can't have a circle with radius length 0. So we would call this solution extraneous because it doesn't make sense in the context of this problem. So whatever we get from the other side is going to be our only solution. All right, so to solve this equation, I'm going to add 50 to both sides. So that will give me 3r is equal to 50. And then I will divide both sides by 3. That will give me r is equal to 50 over 3, um, which is approximately, hold on, okay, 50 divided by 3 is approximately 16.67. It's, you know, it's 16.6 repeating. And uh, there you go. That's, that's the answer. That's what the radius of this circle would have to be.